A few days ago, I got this comment on Queensland's Gympie Goldfields geology video that I made. To which I replied, challenge accepted. So it's time to follow through with that challenge. I love Western Australia. It's a beautiful place. The rocks are so ancient that it's awe-inspiring for me. It's probably my favourite place on Earth. The Pilbara Craton formed as a result of successive geological processes of volcanism, sedimentation and tectonic activity that led to the accretion and stabilisation of ancient continental crust. Development of the Craton involved several cycles of magmatism and metamorphism, which created its highly stable and ancient nature. The major rock type is Archean granite greenstone terrain, formed of ancient volcanic rocks known as greenstones and granitic intrusive rocks. Granite provided the Craton with a stable buoyant continental crust by solidifying as dense magma cooled below the Earth's surface during the Archean Eon. Over time, repeated geological cycles of magmatism, tectonic activity and metamorphism further consolidated these granitic formations and helped to create the Craton's long-term stability and resistance to tectonic deformation. The Pilbara Craton was the first mineralised Craton, the first time that mineralisation was accreted into the Australian landmass. Gold in basin-hosted deposits was the very first mineral emplaced into the rocks of Pilbara. It is typically associated with the metamorphism of sedimentary basins, and the subsequent emplacement of mineralising hydrothermal fluids that migrate through basins, precipitating gold and other metals in favourable structural and porous or permeable rock settings such as faults, fractures and porous or permeable rocks. The northeastern part of the Craton was deposited with gold, silver, copper, lead and zinc between 3.5 and 3.47 billion years ago, and so the mineralisation of this great country commenced. We will take a closer look at the mineral deposits of the Pilbara Craton as we go on. Shortly after the Pilbara Craton began its life, the East Pilbara terrain formed between 3.525 to 3.165 billion years ago, and it is also around this time that the first volcanic and metamorphic gold, silver and copper deposits were deposited in the Pilbara Craton. Additional volcanic-derived molybdenum, silver and copper was deposited 3.3 billion years ago, and additional copper and nickel was deposited 3.28 billion years ago. Between 3.26 and 3.24 billion years ago, additional basin-hosted deposits of gold, silver, copper, lead and zinc were deposited, and another basin-hosted deposit of copper and zinc was deposited 3.12 billion years ago. The first deposits of iron were deposited 3.02 billion years ago, and similar to many of the previous deposits, this is another basin-hosted deposit. Iron can be deposited in basin-hosted deposits through a couple of ways. When iron-rich hydrothermal fluids or seawater discharge into the adjacent basin where anoxic conditions allow for both deep sea hydrothermal deposits as well as iron seep deposits, where iron reacts with oxygen or other chemicals in the water to form iron minerals such as hematite or magnetite. These deposits tend to form in marine sedimentary basins, and alternate layers of iron-rich minerals and silica or other sediments settle down over time. However, back to the East Pilbara terrain. This terrain is one of the most important components of the Pilbara Craton. It is formed by four major volcano-sedimentary groups and one formation. Basaltic volcanic rocks dominate the Warawuna group, with less abundant felsic volcanic and sedimentary rocks. The Straley Pool Formation, with its characteristic carbonate siliclastic fasces, and the earliest Archean stromatolite and microbial fossils, is one of the most well-known stratigraphic units in the Warawuna group. Volcanics in the Cali group are a complex combination of mafic to ultramafic to felsic volcanic rocks, with interbedded siliclastic and chert, all of which suggest highly diverse volcanic activity. The rocks of the Sulphur Springs group are a mixed group of ultramafic, mafic and felsic volcanic rocks and siliclastic sedimentary rocks suggesting significant volcanic activity. The collection of clastic rocks, banded iron formations, basalt and ultramafic and mafic seals in the Sonesville group reflects the wide range of depositional settings present during its formation. The greenstones of the East Pilbara terrain are fringed by granitic complexes of five supersuites. In geology, a supersuite is a large coherent assemblage of related rock suites that may have had a common origin or history within a significant time interval and geographical setting. That is, they may have been produced or affected by related tectonic or magmatic settings and have similar mineralogical, geochemical and structural assemblages. The five supersuites are the Kalina, Tambina, Emu Pool, 
Cleland and Mount Billroth, which were concurrently formed with the felsic volcanic components of the greenstones which formed by melting of a mafic parent rock. The heat and fluids from which were compatible for metamorphosis and mineralization of the adjacent rocks. The West Pilbara superterrain formed between 3.27 to 3.06 billion years ago. It consists of three granite greenstone terrains. Greenstone terrains are ancient geological formations composed primarily of metamorphosed volcanic and sedimentary rocks, typically greenish in colour due to the presence of minerals such as chlorite, actinolite and epidote. These terrains are commonly found in Archean and Proterozoic cratons and are significant for their association with rich mineral deposits including gold and base metals. The three terrains are the Karatha terrain, which includes the Roburn group, composed of ultramafic, mafic and falsic volcanic rocks, intruded by the Karatha granodiorite and granites of the Maitland River and Orphea supersuites. The Shoal terrain comprises the Wando group with mafic, ultramafic and falsic volcanic rocks and thin sedimentary units intruded by the railway supersuite. The regal terrain is a slab of basalt, peridotite and chert, possibly abducted from the ocean floor, overlying the Karatha terrain. Abduction is a geological process where oceanic crust is thrust over the edge of a continental plate, instead of being subducted beneath it, resulting in the emplacement of oceanic lithosphere onto continental crust. As a side note, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button to help YouTube recommend it to others. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of when we upload. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, and you can find that both in the description and in a pinned comment down below. The Elizabeth Hill Super Suite dates to around 3.07 billion years ago, and it intrudes both the East Pilbara terrain and West Pilbara super terrain, marking a significant geological event. Following this, we have the Kurana terrain which formed between 3.20 to 2.89 billion years ago. Located in the southeastern part of the exposed craton, the Karana terrain consists of two granitic supersuites and minor greenstone. This terrain highlights the complex interplay of volcanic and plutonic processes in the region's geological evolution. It was during this time period that more metamorphic derived gold deposits took place in the Pilbara craton, with an age of emplacement dating back to 2.96 billion years ago followed by another basin-hosted deposit of copper, zinc, gold, lead and silver at 2.95 billion years ago. Shortly after this, the first deposits of platinum occurred. Between 2.93 and 2.92 billion years ago, platinum, copper, nickel, gold, palladium, zinc, lead, titanium, rhodium and the rare metal known as vanadium were deposited. Some derived from magmatic processes and others from basin-hosted deposits. The De Grey Superbasin formed from 3.02 to 2.93 billion years ago. These basins are filled with sedimentary and volcanic rocks of the De Grey Supergroup, which unconformably overlie the West Pilbara Superterrain and East Pilbara Terrain. After all this, the Pilbara Craton's birth and evolution was solidified. Some additional volcanic deposits of cobalt, palladium, copper and nickel took place 2.9 billion years ago, followed by volcanic deposits of gold, tantalum and lithium. It is apparent that the gold-bearing rocks were at surface level around this point, as we have an erosional and supergene deposit of gold at 2.76 billion years ago. Supergene gold forms through the weathering and oxidation of primary gold deposits, where gold is dissolved and re-precipitated near the Earth's surface, often resulting in high-purity secondary gold concentrations. This process typically enhances gold enrichment in the weathered zone, creating economically significant deposits. After this, the Yilgarn Craton became highly active in regards to mineral deposits as its evolution continued, but that's the subject of another episode. One notable additional wave of metasomatic iron deposits occurred in Pilbara at 2.01 billion years ago. Regional metasomatic iron deposits are large-scale iron ore deposits formed through metasomatism, a process where existing rocks are chemically altered by the introduction of iron-rich fluids. These fluids percolate through the rock, replacing original minerals with iron-bearing minerals such as magnetite or hematite, often resulting in extensive and economically valuable iron ore deposits. After this, the Pilbara Craton remained relatively silent until a new wave of volcanic-derived deposits of copper, silver and gold occurred 650 million years ago. Today, the Pilbara region continues to be explored for gold and other precious metals. Modern exploration techniques such as geophysical surveys and geochemical sampling help identify new targets for mining. 
The discovery of gold in conglomerates similar to those of the Witzwatersrand Basin in South Africa has also generated significant interest in the region. The history of gold mining in the Pilbara region dates back to the late 19th century, when the first gold rushes occurred. Pioneers and prospectors flocked to the area, driven by the promise of rich gold deposits. The Marble Bar Gold Rush in the 1890s was one of the earliest and most significant gold rushes in the Pilbara region. This gold rush led to the establishment of a town and the development of numerous mines. The discovery of high-grade gold deposits attracted miners from all over Australia and beyond. The Nullagine Gold Rush was another major gold rush that occurred in the Nullagine area, where rich alluvial and load gold deposits were found. This rush resulted in the development of several mining operations and contributed to the region's economic growth. In modern times, the Newman and Tom Price towns, which are primarily known for their iron ore mining, have also seen gold exploration and mining activities. Modern techniques and technologies have enabled the discovery and development of new gold deposits in these areas. The Karatha and Port Headland coastal towns have become hubs for modern mining operations, with companies investing in exploration and development projects. The discovery of gold in conglomerates near Karatha has sparked renewed interest in the region. The Hemi Gold discovery in 2020 was one of the most significant recent discoveries. Located in the Molina Basin near Port Headland, this discovery has been hailed as a major breakthrough, highlighting the potential for large, high-grade gold deposits in the Pilbara region. The Pilbara region remains a key area for mineral exploration and mining. Advances in exploration technologies such as airborne geophysical surveys and remote sensing continue to uncover new targets for precious metal deposits. The ongoing research into the region's geological history and mineralization processes helps refine exploration strategies, making it possible to identify and develop new mining projects. While the Pilbara region offers significant opportunities for mineral exploration and mining, it also presents challenges. The remote and rugged terrain, coupled with extreme weather conditions, can make exploration and mining operations difficult. However, the region's rich mineral endowment and the potential for new discoveries make it an attractive destination for mining companies. As mining operations continue to expand in the Pilbara region, there is growing emphasis on sustainable and environmentally responsible practices. Mining companies are increasingly adopting measures to minimize environmental impact, manage water resources, and engage with local communities to ensure that mining activities contribute positively to the region's development. The geological evolution of the Pilbara region is a fascinating journey through billions of years of Earth's history. From the formation of the earliest crust to the deposition of precious metals and the development of modern mining operations, the Pilbara Craton has played a significant role in shaping our understanding of geological processes and mineralization. The region's rich mineral endowment continues to attract exploration and mining activities, promising new discoveries and contributing to Western Australia's economic growth. As we look to the future, the Pilbara region remains a vital area for geological research, exploration, and sustainable mining practices. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.